Hi there and welcome back to CNC Modeler. It's great to have you here. Thanks for your support. And uh, so today we're going to be looking at my new large Polar 3D printer. If you do like what you see, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing quite a bit of this in the near future. Uh, if you like the uh, videos, please hit those thumbs up. It helps other people find them. And if you want to find my new stuff, uh, hit that notification bell and you can see me when it comes out. So what have we got here? Well, as you can see, uh, this is a fairly large 3D printer. So this is Average Joe. Um, so this printer is about as tall as me. It's about 1.8 meters tall. And it's an unusual design. So it's a polar printer. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that it has a rotational platform and it has a um, set axis that goes up and down and a X axis, uh, sorry, radius axis. So um, basically, the way it prints, instead of doing Cartesian X Y movements, it does rotational and radial movements. And so, why have I gone for this? Well, there's one reason why I think polar printers haven't taken off, and that's because they don't print very well near the center of the bed, and that can be a really big problem for you if you want to print something that's solid. Thing is. I don't. I want to print uh, model aircraft fuselages and they definitely aren't solid. And in fact the only point that I would probably want to print in the middle of the bed is right at the tip of the tail and I can always print a cap to cover that off. And also the way I want to print my aircraft I'm going to have a carbon fibre rod right up through the middle of it and I can align that carbon fibre rod with the print axis of the machine and hopefully won't have any problems. So with that uh, no more ado, let's uh, give you a quick walk through the uh, printer. So obviously we've got the platter, this stuff at the bottom here is still being worked on. Uh, but we've got, what have we got? We've got, um, uh, starting with the obvious stuff, so we've got uh, 20 mil rails here, here, here and here. So the Z axis and the radius axis are on 20 mil rails. There's an extra support on the radius axis. Um, it's got, uh, that's eight, uh, no, 12 mil, I think is what I bought for that. Um, that uh, at the moment is just to stiffen things up, but it might get used for more things in the future. Uh, all these linear bearings, they're all open because I might want to um, drill these rails and provide some supports in the middle later. Uh, I've tried to do this um, as uh, not cheaply as possible, but as practically as, as possible. So you can see in here there are these um, U-bolts holding it all together. So I'll give you an idea of scale. That's the size of the U-bolt. So it's quite a big thing. Um, and uh, so I'm using that. And this is a uh, five inch diameter steel tube uh, with uh, three mil wall thickness. So I think that's gonna be plenty stiff enough, especially when it's teamed up with these um, rails. Uh, so let's walk you through the design very quickly. Uh, so start with a blank sheet of paper and put the spine in. So there you go, so that's the first part in uh, 1.75 meters tall, 5 inches diameter, 3 mil wall thickness. Then uh, if we turn on, and can't roll that in yet. There you go. So there you can see the first part of the U-bolt coming in. And then the bracket, and I haven't done any more really than just that. Um, so I want to put copies of that through. So we've got two at the top. Uh, try and make it as stiff as I can, given the components that I've got. Two at the bottom, and then onto that, we're now going to mount um, some blocks of aluminium that I'm going to machine on my mill machine to hold the. Um, rail mounts there you go so that's one rail mount these are all um, drawn from spec sheets that are on the internet 
Um, I've got these, but I just didn't want to drag them up from the garage, to be honest. Uh, so now you've got your first rail, second rail, and all the mounts in. So getting a little bit of progress. So the next things, I'll need some linear bearings. So Fusion 360 is really good in that it will um, allow you to import from, it's basically integrated with a lot of vendors. So they'll let you import their parts. Um, so, which is dead handy. So you just import it and position it. And then I've put copies in to create the rails that I want. Now I've spread these apart because I want, um, so the bigger the distance you get between your linear rails and your bearings, the stiffer things can be. So um, trying to give it as big a chance as possible to work and be accurate. So now I've uh, another machined aluminium plate that goes on here. This is to hold the rails. As you can see, there are um, holes in here where the uh, radius axis linear rails will go through. Those have been machined. I'm probably going to mount something on the back, like a, a clamp, just to try and stiffen this up a bit more. I don't know yet. I'll have to see, but I'm going to need some way of locking them on there, whatever happens. And so if we carry on now, we've got the rails coming in, and then we've got the end plate. And now I'm just putting a load of joints and stuff in. Hopefully, so we go some more linear um, bearings coming in. Oh, stop. Press the wrong button, sorry about that. And uh, so there's linear bearings coming in. Now we've got uh, a Z motor bracket coming up here. So there you go. So that's the Z motor bracket. And again, I've also imported. Uh, NEMA 23 stepper motor. Um, I'm not going to use these for the prototype. I might do for the real machine uh, or if I ever productionize these things, but uh, not for the foreseeable future. I've got a load of scrap ones off of um, some old miller machines and things like that, CNC machines, so they're plenty powerful enough. Uh, while we're talking about stepper motors, I'm actually going to be using these drivers. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but these are. Um, these are TB6600 uh, stepper drivers. They'll run up to 40 volts and I can't remember how many amps now. I think it's four amps. So you're looking at like 120 watts. Um, so that's plenty really to be going at. So hopefully that will work. Um, and uh, a big shout out. So I'm going to be tandeming these things up with um, a Duet 3D control board. Uh, the guys at Chew at 3 d have been really helpful. Um, they've uh, offered to um, support me in terms of uh, getting the firmware up and running for a Polar machine. They've also uh, let me uh, uh, let me aboard a control board for evaluation purposes to see if I can get all this to work. So they've been really good. So thanks very much, guys. And um, as part of this build, I'm going to be walking through how I've set up the Duet board as well. So yeah, that'd be cool. Although it is making my head hurt at the moment, I have to be, you know, honest. Um, so we've got uh, what we're doing now. Uh, helps if you click on the button. Okay, so now we've got um, up in here. We've got a coupler and the lead screw come in. So I am on this. Um, here. I am going to be putting a pillow block up here uh, that will take the axial load on the lead screw and then uh, because this is in tension I don't need a thick lead screw to keep stiffness it will always stay straight. And if I come on down here you can just see I've mocked up a T-nut in there for now just to make it look more representative. Then I've put on a couple extra um, uh, linear bearings and I think where are we at to now so now we're putting on additional u-bolts uh, to cover there we go so the so we got that uh, just so as you know that 
bolt there isn't actually that was just the first one I did so that's not part of the real design so these are just sheets of NDF at the moment that I'm going to make the base out of um, just very simple so as you can see there's a internal panel that will tie that off I'm probably going to uh, paint the inside of these and fill them with concrete so the way I've done this is I've got my 600mm platter and allowed myself a bit of room and then uh, so the good the way I've worked is that the 600mm platter the center lines up with the center of the um, with the center of the um, printhead assembly and so what that means is uh, when I slide this along I can get uh, 10 mil clearance at this end 10 mil clearance at that end and I can cover the full 300 mil radius so that's, that gives me my 600 mil um, print area that I want which is cool so and then just put a, a cap on the top of that and then uh, mopped up the platter just to get my head around it and I've dropped in a uh, printer head I suppose you call it extruder and yeah I'm just uh, going to have uh, some form of mounting plate on there but as you can see there's still a fair bit of work to go really um, but I'm getting there slowly definitely slowly um, so there you are hope you uh, enjoyed that um, I'm going to be like I said I'm going to be doing more on this and I am going to be doing um, uh, looking at the Duet 3D control board and trying to get my head around that and integrating it so with those step drivers um, hoping to do a high power extrudent um, so a hot end that runs at 36 volts with three heat cartridges to try and get flow rates up uh, but these are all things that are going to come in the future as and when I get around to them um, so what have I got just so you've got an idea I'm serious about this so obviously I've got the duet card I've got the, um, got the stepper drivers I've got a load of hardware so I've got the uh, U-bolts I've got the pipe I've got the uh, lead screw, I've got the linear rails, I've got the aluminium to machine, um, I've got some uh, second hand stepper motors that I'm going to use, I've got the MDF, I can make some concrete. So all of this stuff is all stuff I can get on with, it's just time and effort really. So uh, anyway, let's see how it all goes. So if you're interested in following this beast of a uh, of a print then um, of a printer then please do uh, subscribe to the channel please do like and um, hit that notification bell on the videos so thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll see you again next time thanks very much cheers